This is Rebecca Clark, Episode 8, Blank Pieces of Paper. This podcast is for anyone that knows they haven't yet found and offered up their best work, but are compelled to seek it out and do it. Are you ready to move your desk? Hello, this is Rebecca and welcome to the show. I'm excited to talk today about a simple piece of paper, a blank piece of paper, in fact. I love blank pieces of paper. I always have them with me and I love them in any shape or size. In fact, this week I was so excited. I bought a large roll of white paper and was waiting for it to come in the mail because I felt like I needed a huge piece of paper to get out and organize some of the thoughts that were going through my mind and for some of the planning efforts I have going on right now. And so I have strong feelings about these blank pieces of paper, but I'm going to share it to you within the framework provided by a children's book that I just read. And I was so excited to read some children's books on some of these podcasts because they are usually about three or four minutes long when it gets down to it. And they are written by adults most of the time. And they are written with lessons that are good for children and excellent for adults to remember. And maybe that's on purpose. Or maybe when we're an adult, we just wish we understood a concept better when we were younger. And perhaps that drives some of the authors to create some of the stories they do. But I uh, was talking to one of my very good friends and mentors in the podcasting world, and he said, oh, you know what, before you read a children's book, you probably would want to get approval from the author. And right now, I decided the trade-off is to talk about the book instead of creating a whole new interaction with an author at this moment to get approvals. And so maybe that'll come later. And maybe you'll say you don't need me to... (laughs) read an entire book. Uh, They're short enough where I can pretty much share the entire point that I'm trying to make with the book. But this particular book I'd never heard of before. It was called The Dot by Peter H. Reynolds. It's one of these that were available from the Scholastic Book Club, and it was actually gifted to us somehow. And so I'm not even sure who gave it to us, but it showed up in uh, my son's materials. And so I wanted to use this as the basis for discussion about blank pieces of paper. Because in this book, there's this little girl named Vashti who was given a white piece of paper in her art class. And she sits there and she's frowning and she's not interested. She says, you know, she can't draw anything. And so her teacher jokes and says, oh, it looks like a polar bear in a snowstorm. And said, that's not funny. You know, I, I just can't draw. And so her teacher just is very calm and smiles and says, just make a mark and see where it takes you. She's very mad (laughs) that she has to do anything. And so she grabs a marker and she jabs the piece of paper. So you can imagine it's probably torn the paper a little bit and it's just this little mark. And so her teacher has no emotions about this and studies it and says, okay, now sign it. This little girl looks at it for a minute and then she writes her name in large letters at the bottom of the page because she knows that she can at least sign her name. Well, when she walks into her art class that next week, she's surprised because above her teacher's desk, there is this very nicely framed white piece of paper with a dot in it that says Vashti at the bottom of it. And she's put this beautiful swirly gold frame, she calls it, on there. Now Vashti's mad. Like she's at one moment, she's in shock and wow, my work is on the wall. But then she's disappointed because she realizes that is not actually her best work. And so she opens up her watercolors and stuff that she never used before because she's so busy pouting um, and she starts painting different dots. So in the pictures it's showing she's going through all this white paper with like one dot on each. And then she realizes, oh wait, I can mix some colors. And And then she's putting more dots on the sheet. And then she starts experimenting with different combinations of little and big dots. And then she gets really creative and takes a piece of paper and puts so much color on it around the edges that she creates the look of a plain white dot, even though she didn't actually create it. 
right? So um, just by putting a frame, so to speak. And so by the time there's this art show at school a few weeks later, she literally has this whole wall full of different kinds of dots, different combinations of colors, and it really became a central part of this art show. And as she's standing at this art show, looking at what she created just over that last few weeks, there's this little boy looking up at her in awe. And he says to her, you know, you're a really great artist. I wish I could draw like you could. And she's, you know, saying, well, I I bet you can. And so what she does with him is the same thing that her teacher did with her. And so she hands this little boy a blank sheet of paper and asks her to show him what he can do. And he is nervous and he draws this little squiggly line. And then she says, sign it. And the book ends. And I thought this was just a wonderful little book because it it shows that creative process that we have to go through in any part of our life. And the amazing part is the tools are in front of us. They're all around us. Um, these blank pieces of paper, the pencils, the pens, the watercolors, the all of those are available, uh, very easily available. Most of these things nowadays that we need to do anything. And right off the bat, it was clear that attitude is something that is really important to the equation. And what's also important is willing to take that first step to put something on the paper. Until we make that step, nothing happens. And what I really like is this story talks about how a week later she comes back to the art class because there needs to be space between steps sometimes so we can have different feelings, different experiences, so that when we come back and see what we did, we can go, wait a second, I can think of more right now. So you're no longer thinking, I can't do it. You are now in this different mindset of not only can I do it, I know I can do better. Oh, wait, here I have some tools already at my disposal that, duh, I wasn't using. And then all of a sudden this creativity just starts to flow. And I've seen this so often in work environments, especially where there's some kind of new initiative or some new kind of work that comes and people are a little unclear. And it's almost like we're afraid to take the first step because we know the first step is going to be a little bit of a failure. But I would recommend something, and I know I've put this into practice many times, uh, I recommend being the first person to take that step. Take the blank piece of paper and start writing on it. And what you will find is most people are very good at critiquing what's already done. (laughs) All of a sudden, people's minds start to turn, right? Because they didn't want to start it. But the second it started, there's ideas that start to flow on how to make that better. And by the end of it, the piece of paper looks completely different, doesn't it? We start with a very rough plan or a very rough proposal or a very rough approach. And then as more feedback comes in, or we have time to have different experiences, then it starts to take shape. But nothing happens until somebody puts a mark on that piece of paper. Now, your natural default state right now may tend in two different directions. You may be someone who loves blank pieces of paper, like me. I just love that blank sheet. There's so many possibilities. If you are a person that is very good at taking existing models and charts and formats and that kind of thing and adding the details and giving very specific information or analyzing it, by all means, keep doing that. I just suggest that you become aware of what it is you offer because it's very helpful to know up front if you can take blank pieces of paper or if you need a little framework first because then when you're in teams or in working something alone, you can reach out to someone that can help get that started. And I think both skills are necessary. I think we all need to learn both kinds of ends of the spectrum, but you will definitely be better in one area than another, most likely. And so some of us are willing to put our neck out there and go, I'll take the blank piece. It's going to be rough, but I'll get something down. And then others can come in and start ripping that apart. And we've we've got to be open to that when we're the ones that start it, right? It's not our baby. We just started it. (laughs) So lots of lessons to be learned. Now, what also in this story I appreciated is how quickly this little girl saw the value of what her teacher had done for her. Or maybe she didn't see it. She just was repeating the process. I don't know. But that is something that we can offer as when we learn and grow and start contributing in something that we 
don't withhold that from someone else. And especially for her to see someone that was younger than her, perhaps, and smaller, that was already looking up to her. There must have been so much accomplishment and pride that she felt from realizing, wait a second, my teacher gave me this opportunity to think differently. She rewarded my small effort with a big, beautiful frame, and it propelled her into more creativity. And now look it, I've exposed a talent to myself I didn't know I had. And now's my chance to help this little person next to me that's admiring my work, a chance to get started with a different mindset and with hope that they can create something as well. So see, these children books are really good for adults, really good for those of us who work in environments, whether that's at home or volunteering or at work, where we need to get started on something and we need to inspire others to get started on something and we need to work together to create something that did not exist anymore. And I thought this was a great example of propelling that motion forward. So I would encourage everyone to start falling in love with blank pieces of paper if they are not already. And just use that as a mechanism to get started on whatever idea you have or solving a problem that you're dealing with in any environment and see where it takes you. Thanks for listening to the show today. If you enjoyed it, I'd love if you'd write a review and share the show with your friends. Sign up for a weekly nudge at moveyourdesk.com. See you next Monday.